Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Low Rollers Live Dungeons and Dragons live adventure. As always, I'm your host, Danny Allenson, playing the role of Bryn Wanders, and with me here is Jonathan Edwards playing Naroth, Prince of Thieves. That's me. We have Danny Garcia playing Astor Mythlater. That is me. Rachel Murphy, of course, as is Grim Berza. Hello. Alan Seymour playing the lovely lady Lilith von Kiln. It was up. So. <laughs> Robert Seitz is Zarya, servant of Obadiah. Hello. And our amazing and wonderful dungeon master, Christopher Rondo. Chris, why don't you recap it and take it away? Perfect. So last week we left the Bohemian Forest and um, the Siliana sort of chapter, and we headed towards the Cascade Range. Uh, we have been attacked by ghost wolves. We have been trapped in by ice storms. Uh, the climbing was very perilous and to an extent exhausting, but the party has ultimately overcome these challenges. We last left off with the party how are the party defeating these ice ghost wolves as they begin to howl towards the moon. Before we start, any questions? Nope. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Nope. Perfect. Um, so they begin to howl. Any immediate reaction? Astor puts his weapons away. Isgrim looks around for more uh, wolves incoming, or other creatures incoming. Yes, <laughs> Lilith does the same. North is a little bit more on edge, because howling wolves usually mean more wolves. Um, so, uh, you guys do this for in, what, um, about maybe a minute of howling as they begin to head to this map's north east. Uh, I'm good with directions. <laughs> but that would be top right. Top right. So they're running away and howling? They're not running away. They're they're doing uh, like a stepping sort of thing, but um, <clears throat> they are continuously howling. I'm listening to see if I hear any howls in response. Perception. Uh, nothing in response by what you can tell. Um, who has the light spell currently? Uh, where was it on? Uh, Lilith had it on a, like, a, just like a rock. Okay. Where is the rock? Um, it was probably dropped in the middle of the group during combat. Because she did pull her shield and weapon. We'll, we'll put that there for now. Okay. Um, so, what's the plan? Or would you like to follow the ice wolves? Um, they didn't go very far, but it is fairly dark. You can maybe hear them breathing. I'll, I'll say Eastern with his perception check can hear that they have returned maybe about uh, 80, 100 feet away. And are, you can hear them breathing still in this... Um, this frigid cold still very apparent. So these um, these wolves don't give off light or anything like that, right? They're, we can just tell their spirits. Correct. Okay. Ashley looks at the party and he says, "You might call me crazy, but I think I might want to go and see where the wolves headed off to." You're crazy. You are crazy, and I suggest we uh, vamoose while we still can. Uh, isn't there supposed to be an ice dwarf clan living around here? Iskrim nods vigorously. <laughs> How vigorous. Well, um, 
This grim the head bones. bangs. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the bone, himself with his beard. The bone charm on his beard comes off his chest by like three or four inches and like bounces back and forth. <laughs> wow. And we were hoping that these ones were helpful, right? Yes. So where are they? What he said. I do not know. Um, but I am actually inclined to follow the wolves as well and see if they lead somewhere interesting. I would uh, like to do maybe some more research into the matter as well. Like uh, this seems very uh, I intriguing. I have an idea. Um, if you guys are willing to wait a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Chris, can I ritual cast commune? Is commune normally a ritual? Yes. If you want to take the time to do that. But the question is, the wolves are going. Do we have the time to stop and create a spell? Did you prepare oh. commune for the day? Oh shit! I forgot. I'm not Iskrim a wizard. follows the wolves. Uh, right. Astor is shortly behind Iskrim. No pun intended. I'm behind the two of them. I'm shortly <laughs> behind the other people. <laughs> North is going to follow, looking back and saying, "Well, they were not extraordinarily difficult to defeat the first time." At a boy. Chin up. If they attack us, we'll defeat him again, I guess. Alright, so I go over and pick up my light spell. Do I have control of it? You should. Okay. And I will follow. Eastgrim will recognize this. It appears to be um, part of the ruin. This seems to be the only building left. Um, the wolves seem to be standing vigilance against them, but largely ignore your presence as you begin to approach. Well, what does this look like to us? Right now, it looks just kind of like flat stonework um, with things kind of toppled on top of it. Uh, more stonework. So it was probably a larger building at one point in time, but clearly it didn't stand the test of it. Can I see, is there any type of, uh, I'm going to approach and see if there's any type of entrance to an underground, maybe? I'll take an investigation. All right. Does somebody want to help me? I'll Before help. I roll? How does that work? Um, Means he got advantage. Which is a good thing. It doesn't look like there there is an entrance. Astor is actually going to walk up walk up to Iskrim and say, "Does this look familiar to you at all?" This looks like it has been buried under storms and storms of snow. Recently, or over over a lot of time. Um, when was the last time I was here? Well, since the last time that I've been here, which has been some years. Ooh, I see. Aster is uh, gonna take a quick walk around the the place, I guess, doing his own investigation check, and while he's doing that, <laughs> kind of off to the side, he says one of the most apologies for the violence, and just keeps going around. You see them slowly begin to turn to stone. Interesting. Can I do an investigation check around the building? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. For the same reason, see if I can find any engine. Wow. Yeah, um, I, I think with, with this check, um, 
there is no apparent entrance, but there is quite a bit of rubble. If you, um, you know, push something or some, you know, do something to help create a clearing, uh, you would have better luck with it. Like move some rubble around and stuff like that? Basically, like, uh, do a more physical investigation check, if that makes sense. Sure. Um, Astor will go ahead and do that. Sure. Uh, you can find a... Um, what it, what appears to be like this uh, circular stone like um, manhole, for lack of a better way to explain it. Uh, you know, maybe about um, four feet in in a diameter radius, oh, radius. Uh, and eight feet in eight feet in diameter. Um, so, I mean, you can open it and try to climb down if you want. It, so this is on the ground. That's correct. I take it. Okay. Well, before he does that, Astor is actually going to say in a loud voice, Hey guys, I found something. What is it? Looks like a, a hole in the ground. What's inside? I will tell you in a second. And Astor is going to uncover and see if he can see anything. Um, there's a ladder going down. Uh, with with 60 feet, you probably see the floor. Um, it's stone flooring. I say, uh, here, and I, he... hand him the, I hand him the rock with the light on it. It doesn't mind happen. If... Well, what I was, what Astro was going to say is, mind if I drop it? No, go ahead. He's going to drop it down to the ground. Can you see anything more at that point? No. Um, but your, your vision is blocked by not by um, the range you can see, but by walls. Oh. So, I mean, the, it drops down, you can see the light extend, but you can't necessarily see any more than that. Cool. At that point, at that point Astro's going to swing his leg onto the rungs of the ladder, look at everybody else and say, well, it does, go. And he's gonna... The ladder doesn't seem terribly sturdy, but it'll, it'll hold your weight for now. Okay, so before he goes down, he says, Let's do this one at a time. And then he starts going down. I, I have a better idea. Why don't we use a more sturdy ladder? And I press the button for the ladder on my rod and put it down in. Astor sees the ladder, stares for a few seconds, keeps going down the same one. <laughs> Noroth is going to turn over to Zarius. Now, do you think these wolves were protecting this place or guarding it? I'm sorry, uh, guarding this place or uh, keeping something in? Uh, I feel like it's a guarding. Uh, it could be a keeping something in. I don't know exactly, but uh, I'm interested in finding out uh, quick question out of character. Can Astor hear this conversation? Probably. At, after Azaria says that, Astor says, couldn't you have asked that before I started going down the <laughs> hole? Naroth looks over and shrugs. I mean, you're just so eager. I didn't want to raid on your parade. You just hear him mutter, God damn it, and That's he keeps going down. <laughs> I'm going to climb down my ladder to sort of be back up just in case. I would climb down Astor's ladder as Astor, as I'm much lighter than Astor. <laughs> and I don't think it would be very squeamish for me <laughs> going down. Plus you'll take like almost no damage from falling. Exactly. Cool, so he gets on the landing, I guess. Alright, uh, anyone else going down? Iskrim will go down uh, Lilith's ladder. I'll wait for Naroth to go down. Naroth looks up back over. Well, you first. She's petting a stone dog. <laughs> of course she is. Naroth kind of uh, sighs and starts the trek underground. I always hate it when we go underground. Uh, Brynn will wait till Naroth 
Narl's head gets a little bit over and pats the dog and says, Stick with your pack. They'll, uh, they'll keep you safe. And then she'll run over and go down whatever ladder is free. Uh, once we get to the bottom, I will, uh, and everybody's off of it, I'll shrink the ladder back down to the weapon. Alrighty. Cool, a room. And a lot of darkness. Is that a door, or is that a... Is that a what? I want to know what other thing you thought it was. I don't know. Opening for a hallway? What case, or is it a, just an opening, or is it... It's a door. Okay. I thought it was a fireplace. Oh. I'm just I'm just kidding. Oh. Astor is, uh... Is there anything special about this room? Okay. Nope. Astor's just... going to go to that door to our quote-unquote south. And he's going to um, survey the door to see if there's anything of interest on it. As it's far as like markings door. for traps. It's a stone door. No markings. How old but does it... this place look? Uh, I was going to say older than you and then realize that would have that would That's that made mostly sense. everything. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're thinking like 10,000 years. Oh, so it's old. Damn. Well, Aster's uh, going to try and budge the door. Does it slide, push, pull? Can I tell? Uh, it's very heavy, but um, you, with with a couple of moments, you could pull uh, pull it open. Or this is a pulling door. Yeah, you'll pull this one open. Cool. When Aster figures that out, he's actually going to tell Isgrim, who appears to be close by. Uh, as I'm pulling the door open, peek in and make sure there's nothing dangerous about the door shin. Okay, Miss Grimm is ready to peek in. Ask for fools. Yeah, uh, um... Give me one second. Um, I'm gonna say this as you are talking, you, you do hear scuffling coming from the other side of the door. Oh. Can we tell if it's footsteps or like a creature or anything like that? It's small. Um, I'll take a perception check for that one. Okay. Yeah, it's probably humanoid. Oh. Asher looks at Isgrim and everybody else. He says, I hope you guys are really ready. Naroth uh, is basically trying to press his eyes against the darkness and gives up, shakes his head, and walks a little bit closer to the light. Isgrim, um, not shouts, but raises his voice a bit and says through the door, We mean you no harm. Uh, what language are you speaking this in? Dwarvish. Uh, you hear? What is that foul common tongue doing here? Oh no. These are people that are here to help. Chris, do I hear this? Because I understand Dwarvish. Sure. Okay. Um... This is sacred place. Leave. Leave or else. We are looking for help to free the others of our kind. Oh, um, just so it's on record, Astor stopped pulling the door on the door as he heard he was going to start talking. That's fine. Um, does anyone continue to push, or are we continuing this conversation? Continue. I guess Astor. Yeah. Oh, Astor is going to ask Iskin real quick, though. So, so, do you want me to keep pulling or leave it as is? Leave it. Iskin okay. will say that in common for Astor. 
Cool. You hear? Come, unarmed. No magic wands. No axes. No swords. No spears. Who? I will do as you ask. May I have the pleasure of the name of to whom I'm talking? Uh, and Isgrim will actually put down his weapons as he says this. Uh, very audibly, I'm hoping. Uh, yes, very audibly. He will turn to everyone else. The person on the other side does not uh, does not wish us to enter with weapons. Wands, anything that uh, can be conceived of as a weapon. So if you wish to go in and speak with this person as I do, you will disarm. If not, then I recommend you stay here. Astor is going to look at the rest of the group. And he's going to say, So who, I recommend we have someone stay behind just in case, but anyone here who initially wanted to do that already? Uh, you see Zarius drop his uh, whip off of his belt and put his whip, his uh, stick down. Narath oh, wow. puts his staff down beside his dagger. The two of us are probably going to be the least useless without our weapons. Well, me too, but yeah. Um, Lilith says, um, how about um, me and Bryn stay behind. Bryn will whisper in her ear. No, they'll, uh, they could use your blessings. I'll stay. Okay, so I will, uh, put my shield on the ground uh, next to everybody's weapons and hand my rod to Bryn and say, this is kind of important. Hold on to it for me. Astor is going to uh, set his dial next to Isgrim's weapon, and he's just going to look at Isgrim and ask, well, shall I pull open? Uh, Isgrim motions for him to wait. And uh, then, uh... So, so in response to your, your previous question, you'll hear, uh, I am the Snow Leopard Chieftain, Grom Snowfreeze. How do you spell that? <laughs> you had that prepped. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, Isgrim will then uh, raise his voice as well to make it heard through the door. I am the chieftain of the Bearstone clan, Isgrim Bearzone. And myself you and hear. one, two, three, you four. Hear. We have no friends in the Bearstone clan. Neither have I anymore since they kicked me out and started fi following that evil trident maelstorm. Approach. Approach without harmful intent. You have my word. Myself and four others will come in. The fifth will stay behind in the room with our weapons just as a precaution that nobody follows us, um, that is not meant to be here. All right. Bryn will wave as everybody walks through the, t the door. Bye, friends. You pushing the door, Aster? Uh, pull to open, I guess. Cool. Yeah, my bad. And yes, I guess I'll do that. Uh, whoever's last out the door sees Bryn pick up uh, Lilith's mace and start pushing buttons. Oh god. I enter slowly uh, with my hands displayed so he can see there's no weapons in them. Um, you see about uh, in the room there are eight ice doors. Um, um, upon investigation you will see them. They, well, 
the snow leopard is normally pretty well taken care of. They get tribute from all three clans to uh, basically take care of the ruins. You're also used to seeing them in abundance, if that is a uh, fair statement. Um, and these people appear to be slightly malnourished. Um, uh, not used to, I mean, there is the light spell coming from the hallway. They put their hands up to deflect it. That's why I left it. I'll dismiss it if I see that. So I moved my token in just so the stream can see the room. Uh, okay. Um, I know how I can remedy that for later. Okay. Nerath is going to, uh, kind of, uh, walk around here a little blind. Cool. Um, what would you like to do? They, they appear like they're holding their weapons. Um, they're very primitive in nature. Um, and you enter in and there's just this moment of kind of blocking the light that you guys have a chance to react if you want to. At this point, Astro just says in calm, and he goes, oh, come now. We put our weapons down, you hold yours up. You come into our home. He says this in Dorvish. Astro has no idea what he's saying. Iskrim looks at Astor. You had better be polite to people whose home you have just come into. That is true, but I had no idea this was their home. I have <laughs> you, told you, you that, the, that the ruins are their home. Okay. You come in, you see like tents with uh, like bed rolls in there. Um, that sort of thing. Uh, sorry, continue. He was talking about earlier, but whatever. It is good to see that you are still alive. I had feared the worst when I found that the ruins had been buried by snow. In, in Dorvish, um, we are down to a tenth of our numbers. What happened? We... there was... A creature who spewed ice, and we could not fight back. It flew in the air, had the wind span of a thousand ravens. The dragon. Iskrim nods. Yes, it seems that our enemy, Trident, has gained control of some sort of dragon. The very winged beast that you that you are describing. We we are few, and we <laughs> we have failed our solemn duty of protecting the ruins. And yet, there is something that you have succeeded at. You have resisted this evil influence to give in to your baser instincts as have i but none of my clan was able to do that do you know how you were able to um we we felt the message of the wounded king and we were willing to follow but then the dragon attacked, and we found ourselves unconscious. When we woke up, we were like this. That is interesting. Uh, at this point, Iskrim um, kind of nods to the to the chieftain and and turns to his his group so he can relay in common. So these dwarves were ready to follow the wounded king, but the dragon attacked them. And when they woke up, they were here. Wait, you said they were ready to follow, but didn't? That is correct. 
Huh. Wait. So, Chris, you said these dwarves look like they haven't eaten in a while? They, they, I mean, they're, I don't want to say malnourished, because I don't think they've gotten to that point yet, but they're skinnier. I'll also say this, Bryn, you notice two dwarves come up from behind you from the top room. Um, oh. <laughs> pickaxes in hand. Uh, you hear me shout from the other room. Uh, we got some guys in here. Iskrim looks oh. to Grom very quickly. Are they yours? Are you expecting anyone else? I, we have people living up, up in the north wing. Are they threatening? I mean, they're threatening in the sense that they're cautious and approaching you. Astor does um, go back to the room because he heard Bryn. <clears throat> and, uh, and I guess in common, is that's <laughs> the, the only thing he thinks they might know. He says, we mean no harm. And he has his two hands up in the air. <clears throat> we are speaking with your chieftain in the other room. And he kind of uses his head to nod back towards the room he just came out of. You hear um, in Dwarvish. It's very loud. Oh, Grom. Orders. At ease. They're not hostile for now. They, uh, they don't put their weapons down, but they, um, they don't look like their weapons are out in, like, a combat-ready position, but they're not acting aggressive, if that makes sense. Okay. Brynn's cool. got a hand close to her weapon, but she'll just talk their ears out. Astro sees this, and then he just goes, all right, and he walks back into the sleepish room. As Astor walks back into the room, Naroth is going to walk out to join Bren. And this is my friend Naroth. Now, Naroth is interesting because... So Lilith says in Dwarvish to Grom, um, how long ago was the dragon attack? What is that filth accent? <laughs> <laughs> she is she trying. trying. Sorry, I learned Dwarvish from a clan very far away. What, the Ravens? No. Um, from Excelsior, the other, an, uh, another land, many, many, many leagues away. Just uh, confusion. What is a, uh, a league? It is days and days of walking. Well, a league isn't days and days of walking, but the land that they come from is days and days of walking. And also days and days of sailing. You see him kind of like shiver for a second, which doesn't happen very often to a nice dwarf. But what is your business here? They are here to help us. What, these skinny folk? Yes. Though they are not like us, there is much power in them and there is much goodness in them. And they are here to help us reclaim our freedom from this wounded king who would terrorize our land and use, his, use our people for his nefarious means. Moment of pause. He uh, inspects the four people in the room fairly carefully, seeing uh, um, Eastcrim and Zarius um, there. He kind of nods semi approvingly to you two, um, but looks there and sees the armor of Lilith and Astor and goes, These are metal wearers. What good can they do? They don't have the mobility of of quality hide. Just as every building has different types of stone for different things, so is this party built. Quite well, in fact. 
we'll let Lilith just says and I bring the blessings of my God and they're bringing their their pantheon with them Eastrim you're from the Bearstone clan have some respect they are not trying to convert us they are helping there is a difference and at this point, I will accept help from anyone who is willing to take on Trident, take on the dragon, and take on the Wounded King. Moment of pause. We'll let our gods decide. Tell them to leave. Um, when he says that, is that including myself or just the other three? That's to you about them. Okay, so, um, I mean, Lilith definitely got that, because she understands Dwarvish, but Iskrim also turns around and tells Zarius, Lilith, and Astor. The clan wishes to seek the will of their gods, and for that, you who are outsiders to the Ice Dwarves cannot remain. Is there... I understand, but is there any way we can stay where it's outside of the weather? That's, um... Up above ground. Would them leaving and staying in the room next to us be enough? Moment of contemplation and a quick nod. He scream nods. That'll be fine, Astor. Astor oh. gives Astor gives the chieftain a slight bow of appreciation and steps outside of this room. Lilith walks back in the other room and um, retrieves her rod from Bryn, because as, as much as she loves Bryn, she's not going to... Uh... Somehow she managed to push two buttons at once, and it's kind of uh, um, <laughs> broken. Uh, and so, it's until you kind of like give it a few little... What is it called? What is you whack it a couple times, and then it, it works. Percussive maintenance. <laughs> Bryn was twirling to... it around as, as Lilith came in. Oh god. While it's on Bryn. fire. Bryn. After Bryn. Lilith... I was just going to say, after Lilith does her percussive maintenance, Astor's, Astor's going to ask her something. He's going to say, Hey Lilith, would you mind uh, asking those fellows over there, and he indicates towards the other dwarves, whether or not they were my music? Not loud music, just music. This uh, I... Rom is going to look towards Zarius and wait. I was going to say, Iskrim is going to nudge Zarius, but. Uh... <laughs> okay. um, Lilith relays the question to the other dwarves in Dwarvish and say sorry for my accent. <laughs> no distractions. He, like, pushes this door shut. So, what's the, uh... What's the lowdown? Dwarves will speak to their god. <coughs> oh. I don't know if I meant that literally, but... They're going to seek advice from their god, I guess. I figured this was a temple. Usually, only temples are this old. Or Zarius. Hey. <laughs> We're gonna fade from that scene. I'd say that in Infernal. <laughs> We're going to fade from that scene. Um, Grom, uh, so there's this basin of clear water um, that is there. Uh, as many of these people begin to empty out water skins and uh, to sort of uh, increase the water level. And he ushers Eastrim forward. Eastrim will follow suit with his water skin. Um, but before he pours, he will look to Grom to make sure that that is acceptable. Uh, he gives you a slight nod. Um, I think 
Iskram would be familiar to of this type of communication on a smaller scale um, where uh, maybe shamans or the Druidic people of the clans will do this in a stone bowl and attempt to look through it. Um, but Iskram wouldn't have seen one that's this, this large. Okay. And he begins to look through it as pictures begin to form. Uh, we see the three main three main guardian spirits, the the polar bear, the the raven, the um the badger mole, uh, and then even the the fourth clan, um the winter wolf appears as well, though uh, he doesn't appear as large as the other three. Uh, we will see remnants of smaller clans. We see the rabbit clan, the snow leopard clan, um, and uh, they begin to basically enter this circle that uh, goes around the edge of this water. And um, Grom begins to do this chance as more pictures begin to show, and they show a scene of they show several scenes. They show a scene of Lilith directing her magic towards Naroth, the faithful day at the at the Tower of Babel. We see scenes of Astor killing people seemingly without remorse. We see scenes of um, Bryn looking longingly towards home through her compass but heading the other direction. And all these scenes show, show this party at its worst. Um, but there seems to be a, a moment of focus for the party as uh, Grom changes his chanting. Uh, we see the six of you and a small contingency of ice storms going face to face against Trident Millstorm's camp. But the dragon breathes ice and seemingly obliterates you all. Grom stops the chanting and the vision goes away and goes This this group will not succeed in their mission. You should send them home. Are the visions seen something that always comes to pass or one possibility? It is the path that you are taking on your current course. And it leads to death. Send them home. Isgrim strokes at his beard for a minute and contemplates. And finally, you see a stony resolve appear in his face. No, I will not send them home. We will try a different path. But in the end, it is better to have died trying to free the people of the world than to go run and cower. That is not the way that we live. Times have changed as a time of survival. You are not surviving down here. You are dying. Your people are skinny because you depend on the rest of us for tribute because that is, that is how we function as a society, as, ho as a whole. Are you going to wallow here in your filth? While you die? One day the lands will be safe, but not on this path. But this is not the only path. So we do not run straight to Trident's camp. Perhaps we find others to come with us. Trident's camp is in an open field. You won't approach without them seeing you. 
We are dwarves. We tunnel. We know many dwarves who did tunnel. The old gods have spoken. Your path is a path of death. Perhaps there might be a way to ask the old gods for a better path. I am willing to listen. I will not go blindly to my death if I know that that is or I will not go glibly to my death if that is what I know will happen. He takes in your words and begins to think, and he uh, looks towards the spirits that are out the outer edge of this, this water bowl, and um, you don't immediately change his mind, but when the polar bear in this circular figure begins to walk forward towards the center of the spool, Grom looks towards this creature and this creature seemingly looks back towards Grom and Grom begins his chance again. Uh, this figure, this polar bear stands on its hind legs and grows in size, taking up the full full diameter of the bull, full circumference of the bull, and uh, he slowly begins to appear armored, um, and like a quick flash, you see the dragon fly and swoop in against this polar bear, uh, and they engage in combat. The water begins to seemingly rise out of the bull and expands the full expanse of this room uh, as you begin to look up and see this display the raven comes forward um, providing the polar bear aerial supports and the badger mole uh, comes from under the ground and the three prepare in this epic battle. And then the water goes back into the bull. Grom, as a moment of shock, doesn't know how to respond. Um, Iskrim will, will bow his head at that just because that was awesome. I, I don't know what this means. In the last vision, we approached Trident and the dragon killed us. In this vision, it was not only us, but those of the other clans, and we went for the dragon and killed it first. It will take all of us united, just as this temple is a monument to the unity of us and our spirits. It will take the unity of our clans then to defeat this. this but, you know, the, the clans are gone. There's remnants of each but not not a lot but as you saw the bear started small and he grew a remnant is enough all that's left is you well then we have the bear and now we need one mole and one raven at the least will you help us I will commune with my people. Iskrim nods and um, he goes ahead and takes out his cue to leave the room. Um, so yeah, you leave the room. Um, there's whispering coming from the room behind you. Uh, what are you guys doing? Besides pirouetting. 
must be really hard <laughs> and heavy armor. Yeah, right. At this point, Noroth is sitting cross-legged on the floor, kind of meditating, seeing himself and his current situation amidst the larger hole. Just doing martial arts movements uh, without his staff. Aster, uh, I'm assuming you're not actually pirouetting. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, Aster's probably just, uh, quite honestly, just pacing the room, kind of keeping to himself in his thoughts and just passing the time as he knows best without musical instruments. Uh, Lilith is, Lilith is just sitting on the ground, sort of waiting to see what happens. Bryn? Bryn is, uh, trying to make friends with these two. They don't speak common. Okay, so she's probably given up on that. Um, she's probably leaning up, uh, against the wall, one hand in the pocket, one hand twirling her pistol, and, like, kicking scum off the bottom of her boot. That has piled up. And when Isgrim walks in, she'll say, So, what did the gods say? <laughs> well, um, they. Sorry, lost my train of thought. <laughs> if we continue on our current path with no... No unity amongst us, we will... We will die. Uh, so... But they showed us another vision. And... They will... The the uh, ice dwarves will uh, talk amongst each other and see what it is they wish to do to help, if anything. Interesting. Um, quick question for you, Iskram. Did you ask them anything about the wolves we saw outside, or did they say anything about them? Uh, player to GM, that is... One of the things that I saw in the in the thing was one of the spirit animals was a wolf, right? Correct. They, I'm just going to make an assumption because they scream wood. They are one of the clan's patron spirits is the wolf, and these are, I would say, protectors for them. I see. Well. I kind of feel bad about wailing on them, but I kind of didn't want to get knocked out. I believe they were more seeing if we had honorable intent and had the strength to help those they were protecting. Ah. I mean, I still feel bad about it, but a little better, I guess. Cool. So what, what are we to do now then? Just wait a little bit? Yes. Cool. I will do just that. Any other conversations before we continue? Okay. Nope. Um, <laughs> Doesn't so... sound like it. I didn't mean to do that. Ugh. Okay. Why can't I open this door? Ugh. Open the door. Open sesame. Ah! Light. Away with you. Begotten door. As, as you see, uh, 
who some of you would probably figure out is uh, Grom Stonefreeze. Um, we have decided to help, but first we must hunt. We must regain strength. We'll need a couple days. Oh, no, was it a common? Oh, okay. They need a couple days. They are going to hunt, and then they are going to help us. I turn to Grom. May we help in your hunt? If you have the time to spare, I think... I think it's time for the old gods to return to fight back for their clans. If we figure out how to draw on the power of the old gods and use that to our advantage, we can defeat the dragon. Do you have any ideas on how to draw on that power? He shakes his head no. Last time I was even close to communicating with the old gods, I was alone in the wilderness for days. Maybe that's a start. Um, how many dwarves are there? Um, not sure you would know. Okay, so Lilith um, speaks to Grom and says, <clears throat> how many of you are there? Grom turns to Iskrim. I don't like her accents. Iskrim laughs. Is that really going to stop you from, you know, freeing your people? I don't like her accent. Grow up. I, I think we should be on different teams. She has yes. a fair she has a fair point though. How many of your people are there that would be willing to help us and join in? No, Weird. I say Isgrim, I say no. How many people does he have? Not willing to fight. How many people do does he have? <laughs> Grom turns to Isgrim kind of demanding because he know he's talking to she? leaders in the Cascade range. Do you have a reason for asking this, Lilith? I can create food for them. Water for them. We don't want your new god magic. We will hunt, we will gain our strength back. If we are supposed to fight this one, why not eat this one? Why do something the hard way and expend strength when Actually, we can Actually, I'm going to say e Iskrim is going to understand this. Uh, they are um, rusty, I guess would be the word I would put it. Uh, they have certain atrophy. Uh, he said that he needs to hunt to gain his strength back was actually the act of hunting to get his strength back. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see. So he's trying to basically rehone his skills because they haven't they haven't practiced it in a while. Right. So um so we'll uh say you understood that. Sure, and I explained that to Lilith and the rest of the party. Well for those that cannot hunt can I at least provide food for them? He shakes his head no. Iskrim yeah. looks, looks to Lilith. If they are going to hunt, they will provide for their own. It is, it is the way of life up here. Okay. Then I will aid them in their hunt if they will are willing to accept my aid. 
other characters. A little ever wanted. Like she's a noble. She's also a woman. She's probably yeah. hunted like I don't know, like fox or something like that. Nothing probably not anything big. But she's an adventurer, so she had to, you know, fend for herself, you know? All right. It, it would be a good way to to get the party um, to show them what we can do, that we can defend ourselves, that they don't have to babysit us, just as we don't have to babysit them. If you guys want to take some time and aid them on the hunt, that is okay. We are not going to take time out of the game to do this. It'll just be a montage sort of thing. But uh, Montage! Uh, we can do that if, um, yeah. if you would like. I'd aid. Cool. I will um, aid. So uh, there are about 20 uh, ice dwarves that appear to be uh, combat efficient uh, who began for the the hunt uh, and maybe about uh, 20 other people that are pretty much too young to be a part of it. Uh, men and women are um, fairly equal in, in this culture. Uh, both of them carry their parts. Um but uh, whoever's participating on this hunt, give me a montage about how you help out. Uh, Bryn, are you going? Yes. What do you do? Use guns, or at least try. <laughs> cool. Uh, give me a survival check. Oh, okay. She's, she'll also be showing the some of the tribe members what exactly she's doing with these things. Um, she's gonna say... <laughs> <laughs> nice! Uh, you are able to help out quite a lot. It's like, we know Trident has some. Ah! Great! How many? He shrugs. He'll probably say this through Eastgrim, by the way. Eastgrim will probably translate. Oh, gotcha. Uh... Eastgrim, how do you help? Uh, well, I definitely will track animal tracks. Um, looking for probably, I'm going to say seal up here and mm, smaller animals like rabbits, but we're probably looking for something large enough to feed the clan. So, uh, following that, finding their places where they will um, come on land and showing our party at least how to get downwind so that they can't be scented and how to tell when they're going to emerge so that our party can kind of disperse and um, help the others as well. Esther, are you staying behind? No, Esther is going to help as well. Okay, uh, montage. Sure, so um, what Esther would be doing is um, he himself is not particularly adept at tracking animals and that sort of thing. However, one thing he does have confidence in is the athleticism of his body. So before they head out, or at least while they're hunting, he does tell Isgrim that his role would be to kind of, if it means to help lure animals into a trap, he can kind of take off and run after them. Or if he can like jump off a rock to help catch an animal, stuff like that. So the intent is to use an athletics role to help the hunting party achieve their goals. Hunting is more about uh, stealth and approaching and surrounding. Um, so perhaps after the surrounding part happens, that would work. Uh, go ahead and give me athletics. Cool. Ooh. 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 Bad inspiration. Uh, I would use you it. You suck. Yep. You, 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 you would uh, use your inspiration? If I had one, I don't think I do. Um. Um. I'm sorry. Uh, yep. Naroth. So, Naroth is going to help by trying to, as quickly as he can, 
um, get to the other side of the forest. So as you guys are rushing down prey, Narth is going to basically scare the prey and herd them in a specific direction so that they're easier to take as a group. Uh, what do you want to roll? Intimidate? Sure. Uh, sure. Um, you help out a little bit. Uh, Zarius. I was thinking Zarius would, uh, want to, uh, as Iskrim was saying rabbits, um, he would probably try and, uh, chase after the rabbits and try to get them, like, kind of with his whip. Um, so... I don't know if that would work or not, but obviously, smaller guy probably goes after the smaller things, not so much the bigger things, okay. is my thing. Um, so I don't know what you would want. I could do like acrobatics. I don't know what you want me to roll for that. It sounds like a survival check. Sounds good. Uh, you help out there, Lilith. Okay, Lilith, knowing that um, she's not a mighty hunter um, and trying to play to her strengths, she knows that she's a basically a pretty decent sort of uh, physician and knows the bodies of things, even animals somewhat. Um, and she's going to, once they bring down some animals, uh, she's going to take her small knife and, um, help gut and skin and, uh, sort of cut up some of the meat for the animals. Hopefully sure. using a medicine check. Ah, uh, this is animals. This would either be an animal handling or survival. But it's still cutting things up. Okay, All right, I'll do, do wisdom. I got a good wisdom, so. Yeah, yeah that helps. Um, so uh, you guys help out for this hunt, and uh, you guys manage to acquire some some food. A lot of it uh, appears to be like rabbits and uh, that sort of thing. There are a couple of um, uh, snow leopards, and uh, you do manage to track a wolf down. Uh, but you bring it back, and uh, they begin to prepare a feast as we fade to black. All right, and we are going to take a quick break. We will be right back in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for joining us for the Low Rollers Live.
Hello, everybody, oh. and welcome back to more. Hey, it's my job. <laughs> Low Rollers <laughs> Live. I was gonna talk to the party. I didn't even. I, Chris. Hi. I, take it away. Yes. That, that's my. You, you wait. You wait until um, I say it. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> So tired. Why do we do this so late? Okay. Um. Yeah, you guys feast. Um. This whole venture. Um. Plus that will also. Um. Basically, the hunt is going to take you the better part of of the day. You're thinking like twelve to twelve hours to to hunt plus cook and feast and that sort of thing. Um, per the usual sort of thing. So, um, I would imagine you guys are fairly tired, um, after this whole ordeal. Um, people would go on hunts for, for weeks, um, and it, it was fairly lucky you guys were able to get enough food for this, uh, within, within the 12 hours. So what would you like to do at this point? Well, we probably need to sleep. You want to sleep here? Actually, better question. You said 12 hours. Is this like mid-afternoon at this point, or is it actually like early evening? Mm. So the the wolf battle happened around midnight. So if we're thinking 12 hours, we're thinking like noon? Noon to 2 o'clock, somewhere in between there. Okay. Okay, um, but it's been this... a very long time since he got asleep. That is true. Say that again, I'm sorry? It's been a long time since he got an arrest. Yeah, I say we take at least a short rest. How long had it been since we did that moment tiny hut thing? Like, close to 24 hours. Oh, it has yeah, been like a while. 20 okay. hours. Um, okay. We guys left. You guys left the hut around six o'clock to um to do everything. Uh, you guys traveled for a little bit to get to the ruins. Uh, fought the winter wolf. So, so about twenty hours, I would say. Okay, that makes sense. So, I say we take a rest. Um, and. Once we sleep, head for the mole clan, the next clan. Sounds like a plan to me. Rest is good. This yep. one? Sounds good to me. Bryn? Yeah, it's time to go to bed. Yeah. Are we uh, able to sleep here? Uh, through translation, you'll get a yes. Do we have to stay in the bear room, or are we allowed to go in the other room? Or They would probably ask you to stay in the middle room. Just from a spacing standpoint. Okay, so... Uh... Lilith will set up her bedroll and a couple extra blankets and yeah, you guys can uh, start a fire here. It wouldn't. Nothing will burn down. Is there materials to start a fire with? I mean, we, there are trees outside. I mean, we have a perfect good wooden wa camp, wagon. Guys... Hey. <laughs> We can uh, find the materials to start a fire, and then we can get the the eight hours you need for the short rest. Okay. Why would we stay on the floor when we could do the uh, protected room? Um, they might not be comfortable with the um, Astor using magic. It's also a spell slot. That as well. 
and we're not getting a long rest. We're only getting a short rest, so. What's the plan, guys? We're going to make a fire and just sleep. Any objections? No. Doesn't Dang. sound like it. All right. Uh, you guys get eight hours. Go ahead and take the benefits of a short rest. Hey. Hey. Get my key back. Let's get those superiority. Dice. Dice. Eesh. I got a scene I want to do with one of you. Uh oh. Let's uh, roll all the dice first and then have the scene. Yeah. Uh, I was going to wait for that. So, so we're taking average, right? For the. Uh, at minimum, yes. Yeah, okay. Really not that beat up from the last fight. Uh, jerk. Jerk. <laughs> yeah, screw you. Just missing some class features, that's all. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. We all set? Yep. Uh I'm almost there. Yeah. Do we get a sort of rest, maybe, Astor? Oh, that's true. Astor would do that. I'll add a 1d6 for everybody. No, is it a 1d8? Hold on. No, it's still a 1d6. Next level, it'll be a 1d8. Almost there. Just yeah, a I... few more sessions. Yay, well, I'm back. I'm back next, at full. Next bard level, I guess. Not necessarily going to be the next level. Ah, uh, yeah. The keywords. So everyone gets a plus two to whatever they rolled. If they rolled. Total or each time? Total. 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 I'd love each time. <laughs> All right, so I'm good. I'm done. Back. All right, scene, Bryn. So at one point in the in the night or in the morning their morning, not actual morning. Um, Bryn will go to Isgrim when they're both awake. That's probably easy to find. Mm -hmm. Hey, Isgrim? Yes? Um, I have a question for you. Okay. What did, um, so you said that it would end in death if we were on our current path. Well, have you ever seen a scrying basin? You know, no. A bowl of water and you look into it and many people will tell you that they can see your future in it. Yes? I've, I've heard of it, yeah. In that room, there is a very large basin in the ground. And that showed us images of a potential future. The first was literally of us, along with the ice dwarves, heading straight for Trident. And the moment we did that, the dragon came and obliterated us. When I asked the chieftain if, if we took a different path, if that would allow us to succeed in our mission, the pool showed us that uh, it showed many, if not all of the animals, the spirit animals of our peoples, and they 
they gathered and they rose up and they attacked the dragon as one. And in that, we were able to defeat the dragon. So I think that our first step, at the least, is to defeat the dragon and to see how we can do this with the others as one. So it showed a leopard and mole and raven? A bear and a mole and a raven. A bear? Yes, that is that is the animal of my people. The leopard was there along with many others. There are smaller tribes, but they were along the outside. <laughs> Damn it, Chris. That's my one. Um, so we have to get everyone. I think rather than <laughs> the gods are vague sometimes, rather than trying to get one of each tribe, although I think that might be a good way to do it, I think what they're trying to say is that we must we must all be in this as one for a one purpose rather than each going for a different reason. Right, you have to be together. Yes. Do you think that'll be hard? Dwarves are a stubborn race. Right, but didn't your people throw you out? Yeah. So how do we get the bear clan? Well, I am representative of that, so perhaps I am enough. At least to start. For instance, the... The vision started out with the spirit animals a bit smaller, and as as things progressed, they grew. So perhaps that will help with us, or happen to us. But then wouldn't we have to find more of the bear clan? Or is it growing in strength, not in numbers? All I know is that in the vision, when the bear fought the dragon, as it continued to fight, it continued to grow. And thinking back to what Grom said, when they were almost going to join the Wounded King and the dragon attacked them and they woke up, they were, they were free of his influence. So perhaps if we attack the dragon, that will help uh, if others see that that will help break them of his influence. Hmm. <laughs> um, anything else? No, Bryn just kind of thinks for a little bit and probably eventually falls asleep trying to think about it. <laughs> you scream anything else? Iskrim looks for something to drink that is alcoholic. He has been talking a lot more than he is used to, and he's ready to put one back and go to sleep. I will assume Lilith had something somewhere. I'll give him some of the tequila from Zheng Zhao. <laughs> All right. He sniffs it. Then he sips it. And then he goes to sleep. Okay. Um, Danny Allenson. That's me. If I if I change recording rooms, would that affect the stream at all? Well, the stream wouldn't be hearing what... I don't... What? So if we went to recording <laughs> room two, would the stream hear it? If I went with you, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sights, Danny. Talk to me in the other room, please. Ooh. Oh. Sights. 
fight. Oh, there he is. I will not listen. You can listen. It's fine. But besides you, you have the dream. We are going to change away from the Russian music and then reiterate this dream. <laughs> You find yourself uh, coming through what appears to be the Dark Abyss. You are semi-familiar with this feeling at this point in time. As you enter a stone office, you see the stonework on the side. There doesn't appear to be a door. You notice the fireplace glowing. Um, in its hearth, the books um, on the bookshelves uh, rising high around this room. And... You see the dead wooden desk, and behind it, you see a reddish-skinned man. He has horns on his face that act sort of as ram horns. He is wearing a suit. He has a staff leaning against the desk. You recognize this man as Asmodeus. He appears a little more tired than normal. If that makes sense, he maybe for the first time since you ever have met Asmodeus or heard about him, he he shows a little bit of fatigue. Uh, bags on his eyes. Uh, he hold, doesn't hold himself as, as straight as normal. Uh, hello, sir. Please take a seat. Are you all right? When ancient gods come back and suddenly I'm at war, I think it takes its toll on any leader. I can see that. Always away with words, Zarius. What can uh, I do for you? We need to talk about someone in your party. Okay. The one that succumbed. Are we talking Yvette? Yes. Yvette Yaldwin. She... When the Wooden King was around two, three thousand years ago, or 20, 30,000 years ago, he chose three generals for his armies. Uh, one, I see that you are preparing to engage this trident maelstrom. His second one's here on Excelsior. His third one is unfortunately Yvette Yeldwin, or at least will be in the coming weeks. You need to kill her before before anything else happens. Whoa, 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 wait. I... We have to do that? Yes. You're in the area. You can finish this now before the Wounded King gets another general. I see. Even even if she managed to temporarily break the holding of the Wounded King, she will come back to his will eventually. Especially as she comes back to Excelsior and begins to ride closer to him. She, unfortunately, her life is lost. I will do as you say. He um, stares at you, kind of. Uh, Asmodeus has a way of like looking through you almost as he gets a, a stock of you and goes, I hope so. Be careful. 
You are needed back on Excelsior. This is the easy part of the mission. <sighs> um, he's going to go to his bookshelf. He's going to hand you a ring and puts it on the table. This, this is a ring of protection. I don't know if you want to use it or someone else, but it could benefit you in the future. And what does this do? It protects. From? Everything. It's just, it gives you a, a natural element layer against against physical attacks. Out of character. It increases your AC and saving throws. <laughs> um, I will take it and... You, you inspect it a little bit and as you take it and um, inside, engraved inside this very simple metal ring, you see it says, um, uh, Asmodeus's protection uh, engraved in Infernal. Um, I'll take it in my hand. Uh, but I'm still, I'm dreaming still, but this is uh, a dream, so I probably won't end up putting it on in my dream. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but, you can also give it to someone else if you choose to, but um, he will dismiss you as you return into this abyss and wake up the next morning. And I think we are okay to return to the to the party. Okay. Hey. Everyone wakes up for the next day. Um, you probably smell the uh, grease from um, animals being roasted from, from the feast prior uh, being prepped for you guys if you choose to. You choose to indulge in it, but everyone will wake up after a short rest. Well, Astor packs his stuff up, puts his armor on, and... Uh... Once everyone else is ready, he's essentially going to say, well, shall we go and uh, visit the Moor clan? Yes. Um, do we know how far it is as a, of a travel from here to the Mole clan? A couple days? Maybe like 24 hours? 36 hours, depending on the weather. Okay. Actually, before they go, Astor does want to ask Iskrim, hey, Iskrim, do you know if, uh, if the Snow Leopard folk may have clothing better suited for the weather around here? I know they don't really need it as badly as we do, but I am curious. Uh, I can answer this question before Astor even asks it. We okay. are not stocked at the moment. These people are, you know, they're wearing well clothing. They don't have excess. Okay. You can just see that as you explore the, the compound a little bit. Okay. Okay, so he wouldn't even ask that question. Cool. Last thing he said was, shall we go and visit the mole clan? What's the plan? Yes. yes. That is the plan. And are we partaking in this plan? Moving forward. Moving forward. Yes. Yep. And uh, you guys head out. And um, at this point, it is about... Uh, so we said about 2 o'clock when you went to sleep. So it's about 10 p.m. currently. We are in darkness still. Um, Are the doggies still there? 
stone. But yes. Another pat. Are any of the ice tour or any of the snow leopard clan coming with us? Uh, no, so um, they're willing to meet you somewhere, but they're not going to travel with you to the uh, to the um, various clans at this moment. They're just, you know, they're still regaining their strength. They're not necessarily fit for for an extensive travel. They just, they really just need a couple of days. Okay. Uh, um, flare to elven flares. Does anybody have? Animal messenger, sending, anything like that? I do have sending. Okay. Um, how does that work? Just like, how does that look so that I could, basically Iskrim's going to describe to the chief what that would be. Um, basically, all it is is um, I can send a message and he will receive it. Um and then he can respond to it in 25 words or less. Cool. Now, before we actually leave, um, Iskrim would ask Grom, what um, the wolves outside that are now stone, what, what purpose do they serve? Repeat the question, sorry. What purpose do the wolves serve? What wolves? The stone ones? Yes. They are just stones. No, no they are not. They came to life as we approached this place and challenged us. And when we defeated them, they walked back to their place and turned back into stone. But they were alive. That's suspicious. I am not aware what what it is you're referring to. I apologize. Hmm. Perhaps auspicious is a better term. Perhaps. But hey, if the spirits came to greet you, it's a sign. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's a sign. The Winter Wolf Clan has been long, long gone. Okay. Um, you scream leaves with the rest. Sounds good. Um, heading out. Heading to the east. Um, cool. So it's going to take you about four hours to reach the uh, next map I have for you guys. What would you guys like? Any scenes? Like to talk about anything? Uh, I would like a scene. Go for it. Uh, as we are walking, uh, I take it Bryn is probably wandering off wherever for the usual agreement, but uh, Zeris would try and go and meet Bryn. Uh, at some point. Okay. Uh, I walk up to her and say, uh, something happened while I was sleeping last night. Okay. Uh, and she pull, uh, he pulls out this ring and shows it to Brent. Cool ring. Where'd you find it? It was given to me, and Zarius points out. Just for my my frame of reference, what does out mean? Mr. Robert. What I'm happened? Right. Oh, okay. I, all of a sudden, you guys sounded like robots. Uh, I don't know if that was just me or not. Uh, computer's running a little bit funky right now. But 
We heard. Oh, uh, I didn't hear. I did not hear anything you guys said. I, all we heard was uh, Zarius points out, and then you you cut out. Oh, Zarius points out the inside of the ring to Bryn. And what does it say? It says, Asmodeus's protection. Huh. You're not going to put that on, are you? Did he cut out again? <laughs> Sounds like it. Alright, well, I guess we'll just have to wait for Sights to come back. Um, Do any other scenes as we're traveling? Yeah, let's skip to another scene until Sights is back in. Nope, I'm good. Um, Iskrim, why don't you tell me a little bit about your headspace? Iskrim is very relieved to find that there are at least some members of the Snow Leopard clan uh, that are alive. He's wondering, though, what... I mean, we're going to the Mole clan, but he's wondering... You know, who else would be there that hasn't succumbed? Um, and oh, just kind of changing his, you know, changing his plan of attack because beforehand it was just kind of let's go straight for Trident, and uh, that that seems to be a path for failure. So he's trying to figure out how best to do what the gods suggested. Why don't give me a religion check? I'll take a nature check too if it's any higher. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, is that a, uh, do you have a 10 intelligence too? Is that all proficiency? Yeah. Nice. Um, I always like crits on knowledge rolls. It lets me give you a lot of information. Yeah, so uh, a little bit about the religions. Um, I think the old gods have slowly been dying, I guess would would be a way to phrase it. Um, not many people put much stock in it. Uh, people um, deal with their own survival in their clans without much consideration for for the old gods. So as you, uh, you know, sort of reflect on this, um, this... Uh, a potential in it is likely that um i'll phrase it like this uh most of the times the old gods in its lore in its uh choosing to show off to its people they don't necessarily take much care in their followers they they exist with whether they're being worshipped or not um so this concept of this uh, polar bear growing in size um, kind of confuses you a little bit, I would say, because the polar bear exists regardless. Uh, the polar bear doesn't grow in size. It just always is, always this figure. Um, so I think uh, based on what you know about the old gods and what you were shown, I think there is more confusion there than than what you initially were led to believe. Um, so the question you have to ask yourself is, what caused the bear to gain more power? And how can we obtain that power for, for use against the Trident Maelstrom? Okay. It's just something to think about. Uh, Sites, you're back. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you pointed out that the inside of the ring is Asmodeus's protection, and then Bryn said something around the lines of... You're not going to put that on, are you? I don't know. 
I'm kind of weary of it. Yeah. From my but... experience, often things come with a price with that one. Uh, yes. Uh, although the meeting I had with him in the night, uh, he, or while we were sleeping, he was telling me some things that were rather startling and very important and urgent for me to discuss with the party. Well, then why are you just talking to me? Uh, I felt like I needed to talk to you first before I went and talked with everyone else just because I think you would understand this a tad more than the rest of them. Okay. What is it? Um, we have to kill Yvette. She kind of just like stares blindly at you while... I, I'm guessing they're still walking and talking. She kind of looks past you. And why would we do that? So, Asmodeus right now is I would say on because he has to fight against the other gods, a.k.a. the Wooded King. And he says that um, if we don't take care of her, her extremely powerful and even worse if she gets back to Excelsior, she um, will be extremely difficult to take care of as she is one of the wounded king's uh, more loyal subjects and you don't think that he's just trying to get an edge as Modius even though edge over what Whatever his next plan is after the Wounded King is gone. I felt like what he was saying was rather genuine for the first time in a long time. What is your relationship with Asmodeus? Well, I don't necessarily like to talk with him all that often. And when he needs or wants me, I get summoned to his terrible chamber. So, why do you get summoned? Because my father was stupid. Ah. I see. Not your choice. No. Well, even though you didn't choose to start following him, you have the choice to keep following him. Of course, he knows a lot more than I do. So he may be right in saying that Yvette will fall again, but... The Wounded King has a couple of generals. And... Uh... We are approaching one of them with Trident. 
who's one of the generals of his army. And the other general is... You bet. So? So, Asmodeus was saying that that the in order for us to be slightly successful that we need to take the generals down as soon as possible. And since we are near Yvette, we should try and take care of her as well as Trident is his suggestion. Well, from my experience, what Asmodeus suggests is often not the right way to go. I would agree with that normally. But I don't know. This time it felt different. And I've communicated with him enough to I feel like know the difference in what he's saying Bryn will stop and like take a knee so that she's eye level with Zarius I will not kill Yvette We can't make her pay for our mistake. But what if this was like supposed to happen? What if what was what supposed if, to happen? What if the wounded king had... already taken Yvette long before she left us? Whether that's the case or not, we pushed her over the edge. Sure. But what if it was inevitable? Does that make it any more right for us to kill somebody because we messed up? No. And I don't know how to split. You cut out a little bit in there. Could you say it again? Sorry, I was saying... Uh... I apologize for saying sorry. I I don't know how to handle this and I needed to just tell someone. I know. Look, what happened to Yvette was a mistake on our part. What happened with the wounded king was a mistake on your part. We can't just fix mistakes by killing the victims. We have to make things right. Isgrim seems to have insight on a way to break the Wounded King's hold, maybe? He mentioned the clan's growing stronger, perhaps. He said that if we fight and strive against the Wounded King, it it can cause them to turn back to our side, so maybe that's enough to save Yvette. I but don't know. I guess we'll find out. Our plan can't be to kill her. 
That doesn't make us heroes. That makes us something much, much worse. I understand, and I wouldn't do that anyways. You know that. She hugs him. Uh, there he is, stands there, like, stiff-boarded. <laughs> Not knowing what to do. I accept hug. <laughs> and Zarius slowly ends up putting his arm around Bryn and uh, giving her a very wimpy feet like hug almost. <laughs> She'll break it and be like, now about that ring. Yeah. What? What are you going to do with it? I don't know. <laughs> I need to figure that out also. I don't know. I have a lot of things on my mind. And it's not... It's not helping that all this... Eh, whatever. All right. Just let me know if you need anything else. And she'll stand up and start walking back towards the party with him. And Zarius will scuttle along behind... <laughs> <laughs> Any other scene? Not for me. What the hell? <laughs> I, I hope this happens to Zarius. <laughs> Sorry, uh, plot, plan. Moving forward, does Darius want to actually talk to the party? Tape has a no. All right, moving forward. <laughs> Sorry, I was pressing the wrong push to talk. <laughs> um, not at the moment. I think I would hold off and allow myself to try and possibly get a better grasp on everything that happened the night before or the rest before. Uh, we will move on. You have traveled about four hours. It's still about, um, what is it, uh, two in the morning? Moving forward? You have a map. Sure. Okay, oh. so. I'm going to cast light again on a rock. It's probably the same rock. Yeah, I'll grab the for you. So you guys are heading map north. If you guys want to just head north or you can explore, tell me what you want to do. Explore. <laughs> the music's I'm very distracting. Keep inching forward until we find something. <laughs> yep. Cool. If you head map north, you're just going to head map north. Yes. Mm -hmm. I found something. Hark. Oh, hello. Hark, a lot of blood. Holy crap. Hey, look, human trans... Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, wrong series. <laughs> Someone probably lost an arm and a leg over this. God damn it. <sighs> so damn it. That's my one. That's my one. That was pretty good, though. <laughs> it was good because I understood it. No. All right. So, um... Can Lilith tell what kind of blood this is? No. 
this is this blood? blood all all blood runs red in this world there aren't any weird colors not even like that can we i know it's really cold but can we tell if the, the blood is fresh or anything like that i will take a medicine check from this one. Oh, i'm gonna suck at this i guess not 17 yeah it's pretty good um yeah, the blood seems like within the last half hour. Oh. Hey, guys, this is very recent. Do we see anything else around aside from blood? Um, not obviously. Not not anything that's obvious. There's a wall. Uh, it's like a, um, the cliff side, but that's about it. Um, as far as where we are now, do we know what the relation is from where we would think the Mole Clan is, or if this is anywhere important? Mole Clan is north, Bear Clan is east. This is just like an intersection-ish type of place? Pretty much. I mean, you would have to travel about, what, uh, I think, let me check my notes, um, you would have to travel about 16 hours to get to to Bear Clan, um, or about 12 hours to get to Mole Clan. I see. Um, can Astor do, well, whatever check is necessary, to see if he can find tracks to kind of identify what may have been here? Tracks. Um, take a survival check. Oh, wow. I'll say, um, this is hard to uh, explain. Uh, you do see humanoid tracks, kind of, but a lot of the snow is, I mean, it's so faint that, um, it's really hard, but maybe you'll see like a single footprint. Um, whatever, whatever was here, died in this space. So the blood's fresher than the footprint. Yeesh. And uh, I'm guessing the blood splatters to scale. Yes. Oh man. And this is a nice wide open space. Yes. Okay, I recommend that everyone um, get closer to the walls of the valley that we seem to be in. Uh, How high are the cliffs? Mm, 200 feet. Do the cliffs seem like? Is there any sort of weird thing in the cliff that we can see? Investigation. Yeah, dark vision. Is that correct? Yes. Um, yes, I do. Investigation. Yay, dumb party. Sorry. I, I say we. Whatever killed this thing. It was probably bigger than this thing, and this thing looks pretty big by this blood splatter. I say so, we keep moving. So get out of the middle of the valley. Come closer to the wall. In the meantime, Iskrim is also going to inspect the walls of the uh, walls that he's nearby for anything. Sure. He's mostly looking for like holes and entrance ways. Take an investigation. Whoa! Yeah, you see holes and entryways. You don't see anyone occupying them. Large enough for dwarves? Probably. Um, I would say larger than that. 
Ah, uh, okay. But I mean, technically, if it's larger than that, then doors can fit in it. I say we keep moving. I second that. Let's move. Cool, let's get out of here. Heading north to, um, Mole, correct? The Moles. Yes. yes. Um, you travel about 12 hours and make it there. Can I have my light spell again? Uh, still casting it? Uh, this will yeah, actually I mean, be daytime, so I'm going to actually illuminate the field. Awesome. Well, what's that? They're off to the top right. It's your cave to the mole. I might take a brief moment to go back to the uh, world map. Not the world map, but the uh, Cascade Range map. Just to do a quick reminder. So where are we now? Bloop. I recognize this place. <laughs> so we traveled through here. Um, so you traveled a little bit to the east, and then uh, around here would have been where you saw the blood. And then basically you traveled north from there. Ah. So at that point you had the option to go to the Bear Stone or basically uh, take a shortcut. Interesting. So, uh, I saw Lilith move. Lilith, give me a perception check. How did I wind up over there? I don't know. I didn't move. I thought I moved over. I thought... <laughs> anyway, I thought I moved over towards the other way, but anyway. Uh, let's see here. You set out perception? Mm-hmm. Sight fixed? What? Is it sight based? No. But I don't hear shit. Um. This is exciting. Uh. You. Last moment, you feel the ground begin to rumble. Um. Unable to react, this creature comes out and uh, attempts to attack you. That's a big lizard. That is a very big lizard. This will be with advantage. Ooh. What a hit regardless. And then it um, has the mobile feet. It will go underneath the ground again. So mobile means I don't get an attack of opportunity? Well, you wouldn't get an attack of opportunity because you didn't have a weapon out anyway. I'm a war caster. I don't need a weapon out. Uh, but you would have to touch your holy son. I, you wouldn't have gotten an attack of opportunity. So, he has the mobile feet, regardless of that ruling. Um, he heads back underneath the ground. Uh-oh. We got what? enemies! I scream out. Well, at least one. Let's roll some initiative. Dang it, Bryn. <laughs> Nat 20. Not that you really need. 
Not really. Is that everyone? So, how much damage did I take? I took... 20. 20. Not too bad. What? Uh, let's see, I got Luxarius, Iskrim, Nara, Lilith, Astor, Bren, that's everyone. Mm -hmm. Alright. So I added the uh, Dex tiebreaker to your um uh, okay. to your thing, so your dot zero zero is actually your uh, modifier. I don't know why yours is ninety nine, but uh, it probably has something to do with something. So I'll check it out later. Uh Bryn Wanders, you are first dex. Okay. I am going to move slightly southward. How does how does climbing speed work? I, for this one, you would need an athletics check. Um, go ahead and give me an athletics check as you begin to walk. Okay. How far do I get? Or is that dependent upon the athletics check? That depends on, on the athletics check. I'll take an acrobatics check from you. I apologize. Okay. Uh, you are dex based. Yes, I am. Much better. <laughs> you are on difficult terrain. You are going at half movement currently. The snow, um, the snow is beginning to affect you. Okay. But well, like, uh, while you were trudging through the snow, you were okay. But as soon as you try to get into like these, uh balance or these uh aggressive stances it's starting to become more apparent okay well i'm gonna go ahead and and dash action to try to climb up the tree so just an athletics yeah i'll take an athletics that's enough to climb the tree okay anything else uh i will shout to the party Get out of the snow. <laughs> Astor. So, he hears Bryn say that, and he's going to look towards the wall closest to him. Does that look climbable at all, or is it just steep? The wall? Does that cover in this direction to the right? It's slippery. Oh, okay, so that's the hard part. I would say without climbing tools, it will be unscalable. Fair enough. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong about holding or readying an action. Would Astor be able to move to the left and then hold an action to attack when he sees the enemy come back up? Or is that not possible? Um... I mean, as long as he uses his reaction, that should be possible. Yeah, it's possible. I'll give it to you. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and move 30 feet over this way. He's going to have uh, his shield readied on his left hand and then in his right. You just see that his hand's going because he's ready to throw something. And he says, Lilith, try and climb up a tree or get close to us if you can. And he's going to hold his action to attack with Elvish Blast when he sees the enemy pop back out. Lilith. Okay, so Lilith is going to click her little boots together and fly 30 feet up, straight up. Okay. Um, and then I am going to hold uh, let's see. Go ahead and give me an acrobatic check. For flying? Yep. Well, this ain't good. You feel yourself slightly pushed by the wind current. You're going to go 
10 feet in a random direction. Go ahead and take the rest of your turn. All right. Well, I'm holding a uh, a guiding bolt for when this guy shows up again. Okay. Uh, um, Nara, the creature appears right in front of you. Uh, I need Naroth, Astor, and maybe Iskrim. And Iskrim to go ahead and give... Or I'm going to attack one of your defenses. We get our reactions? Uh, after I resolve the attack. That does not hit. That does not hit. So this will be against Naroth. Uh, I apologize. This one will be against Astor, and this one will be against Iskram. We'll take oh. the first. Oh, that hurts. It's 14 plus our number, right? Perfect. Uh, yeah, it hits. Dang, that's harsh. <laughs> Naroth is going to use his reaction to do um, uh, absorb elements. Got it. I'm assuming it's half damage if um, it misses. Correct. Cool. May I take, well, I'll take my reaction whenever possible. Yeah, go ahead, take it now. Uh, we'll do it okay. first. Cool. So that'll be three Eldritch Blasts. That will miss. 21. Oh, one. <laughs> oh man. At 20 what? Does your savage attacker go for that or only only weapon attacks? Pretty sure it's only weapon attack. Uh, that's all three, so uh, Lilith. Okay. Cool. Um, I need you to declare which level you're casting at before you cast it. And 17 will miss. Oh. Well, a 17 misses? Yes. Holy shit. Uh, this will end this guy's turn. This one appears. I'm going uh. to attack Lilith's calm defense. Yeah, that'll fucking hit. Yeah, take 47 damage. Naroth. I'm bloodied. Naroth? All right. Um, Naroth is going to go ahead and see if we can't do some damage and healing at the same time here. Naroth is going to. Is this still considered flanking, or not flanking, um, adjacent? Um, yes. Perfect. Naroth is going to swing around, and he's going to unleash a cone of cold that is uh, twisted into fire. It should hit both the snowy salamander and the frigid fighter, and hopefully should also hit uh, get Lilith um, for some healing. Let's see. No, because I'm... Cone. I believe it's 120 feet, but let me check. Thank you. It's 60 foot cone. 60 foot cone.
it does not get that far. Nope. All right. It would anyway. I'm in the air, but ah, that's a good point. All right. In that case, North is going to activate his um, uh, flame step ring, and uh, as a bonus action, he's going to use it and propel himself in another direction, about 20 feet, while also damaging the snowy salamander. Does provoke attack our opportunities? Um, I don't know. I'm going to let you decide that. Is it movement or is it a teleport? I, it, it's kind of hazy how it's described. It, it is described as movement, but it is like a very quick, very fast jump, so. All right. Um, I think the spirit of the spell would mean it wouldn't provoke attack of opportunity. Uh, this is against AC? Uh, it's a dex. Cool. Uh, 19 will hit that. And instead of 12 fire damage, it's 13 fire damage because of my um, fi elemental affinity to fire. I'll move 20 feet this way and then keep using the rest of my movement to keep moving. Uh, the fire damage really hurt it. Uh, it seems to be writhing in pain a little more so. But he's also going to use this. Of course it does. Uh, but it seems vulnerable to fire. Eastgrim. Uh, Eastgrim is going to go ahead and grab its attention by dashing right up to it. Cool. It's also very important that you uh, you call these things by their names. Dashing very important up to me. To the snowy salamander. Thank you. And that will end my turn. I'm serious. Mysterious is moving. Uh, he's going to, as a bonus action, cast Shillelagh. Uh, I take it that's flanking with Iskrim. I love it. Um, and he's going to attack with Shillelagh. Sounds good. 24 will hit. All right, he'll try a stunning strike on the guy. The snowy salamander. <laughs> Roll it. That will not pierce his skin. You just can't find that pressure point. All right, uh, he's going to attack with Shillelagh one more time. Uh, he's going to re-roll that damage, um, due to unrelenting flames. Um, and he's also a 24, right? Four All right. Uh, I'm going to try another stunning strike. Darn. 12 will not do that. Uh-huh. And uh, I will re-roll that damage. I'm going to just roll Shillelagh one more time. It's uh, just nine damage. Got it. Anything else? Um, and I'm going to throw my whip in his general direction. Roll it. Uh, 24 will weaken it. All right. 
and uh, Zarius will uh, continue to move, uh, not leaving his area. And he'll move there. Sounds and uh, that'll end his turn. Uh, the roving reptilian will appear. Let me just check his movement speed. Roving reptilian will move here. Make his appearance. And oh, will attack Iskrim, Zarium, and Astor as con defense again as he does his breath. Uh, Iskrim first, Zarius, and Astor. Ah, barely hits. That does not He's... hit. He seems to uh, get the snowy salamander in that attack, but the, the salamander does not seem affected. Zarius is bloodied. Astor is definitely hurting. Uh, and then he's going to dig back into the snow. That punk. What an ass. <laughs> uh, so he comes upstairs, crawls there. You see him breathe in and breathe out as like these pieces of ice and these frigid cold pieces of water and snow come forward engulfing you guys. And it's not so much the uh, the the pelts from the ice and the snow and the the physical thing. It's just more of the air coming towards you guys and really piercing your skin. Unless you're East Grim, then you're resistance. But you know. The effect is there. And then he snows back underneath. Uh, Bryn. Alright. Bryn, sitting up on her perch, is going to take aim at the frigid fighter with her lever-action rifle. Pow. Oh. <laughs> 14 will miss. I know. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, take my next attack to reload the six-shooter with six fire bullets. And try tagging the same guy again. Fifteen will miss. I will try yet again. Thank you. That will hit. Okay, will I'm adding something. I will add a... Where is it? This... Oh, that probably doesn't hit him. <laughs> this is against his... Wisdom. Uh, I think he has a negative... I'm not going to say that. No, he does not have a negative wisdom. That's not it. <laughs> okay, well, the damage still goes through. Sure. So, 16 additional. Uh, anything else? No, that's it. Aster. Astor is going to <laughs> draw his lightsaber. I mean, he's going to draw his um, his short sword. He's going to go up to the Snowy Salamander to flank with Iskrim. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Before he went up, he does snap his fingers to cast Hex on the short Snowy Salamander. As a bonus action, here's the info. And then he's going to attack it with uh, advantage with Iskrim. Here's the first one. Wow. Yeah, 26 hits. Cool. I'm going to <clears throat> also add a first level Divine Smite along with the Hex damage. Okay. So an additional 8. And then the second attack. Eh, no. I'll miss. Yep. No, that is the end of his turn. I believe your first level divine slide does 2d8. You are correct. I will add one more. All right. That will end your turn. Correct. Lewis. Okay. Um... 
Lilith is going to uh, fly towards the tree. Uh, give me an acrobatic check. All right, you're okay. And then I'm going to say, sorry, guys, but I'll, I'll heal you once I can get myself back up. And I'm going to protect myself against this fucker for right now. And I am going to cast this on myself. Um... And then I will, as a bonus action, uh, healing word myself at level one. Okay, anything else? Um... Nope, that's it. I'm inside the sphere, so I gotta protect myself against his fucking breath. Mm. Zarius and North, uh, I'm going to attack your con defense. Thirty-one against Zarius and twenty-eight against North. No, I think gonna use absorb elements. Sounds good. Uh, forty-four damage there. Um, so he goes in there, just kind of reels back and just expands this, this uh, this breath. Frigid Fighter is going to. Pursue Lilith and has a climb speed of 40. So he is going to uh, take the dash action to move his 60 feet across there, climb up the tree, um, and he is going to put his weight down on the ball and push you downward. Uh, the tree probably snaps in the process. This will uh, take us to Naroth. All right. Naroth is going to twin spell a fireball onto the snowy salamander's position. So I guess two fireballs. Fireball or firebolts? Ball. Okay. The level three spell. Cool. You cannot twin spell a fireball. Yeah, it's got to be a single target spell. Shoot. Okay. In that case, um, a single cast then. Cool. I need everyone to make deck saves. Shoot. Ah. Uh. We'll do Snowy Salamander first, and then, um, oh, this isn't a deck, sec technically against your deck saving throw. My apologies. Um, but uh, attack Snowy Salamander first, East Grim, Sarius, and Astor. Do you mind if I change that up real quick? No, you declared it. Okay. Sorry, wait, which one was for Astor, the second one? Um, so it'll be, uh, Salamander, East Grim, Zarius, Astor. That will hit the Salamander and it will bloody. We need one more. Is that not four? Oh, that's four now. I didn't see four before. Uh, it misses Zarius. Uh, so... I take one eighth of that. Uh, you have I believe. Oh, so you then do zero. not take any damage from that, Zarius. 
It's dexterity. Let's see. <clears throat> Ashton was the third one. I'll take half. Let's see what was the initial. 29. So 14. Sounds good. Uh, is that everything? Anything I'm going to use cast Stone Aegis on Astor. That's going to be about it. Actually, I'm going to use my movement action. Go right about here. Got it. Iskrim. Iskrim will reposition I remember himself. you are in difficult terrain, Naros. Sorry. Ah, I see. Iskrim will reposition himself around the snowy salamander. And the wind blowing cold from the lizard's breath, uh, Iskrim draws that into his lungs. Um, and he figures that though the terrain is difficult for us, these salamanders seem to be easily digging in and out of it, so he figures it will be a lot easier to defeat them if they are made immobile. So, seeking to use the nature of the place to aid him, Iskrim will squat down, plunge a hand into the snow, and grip at it as if trying to pull something up out of it. And for that, I'm going to cast Entangle. Can you tell me where you're planning to center it? On the snowy salamander. A 20 foot square. Am I the only. Did, did any numbers appear with that or no? No. They should have. Uh, we will make this uh, thing green, because that makes sense, right? Oh no, we're in the Arctic. Uh, blue. Oh, uh... Ah, I know what it is. That's against their strength defense. Great. Uh, you... Eskrim, Zarius, and Aster are all caught into this as well, so you, you'll need to um, roll against their strength as well. Unless there's something that says enemies only. No. Creature in the area must succeed on a strength saving throw. So, all three. Uh, so, roll against yourself, Zarius, then Aster. Against ourselves. Uh, Eastgrim will roll it. Oh. Against me. Against Darius. Against Damn Aster. it. <laughs> Aster, you are restrained. Yep. Um, so you go into the earth and summon these things. Uh, how does that look like? So the plants beneath the snow kind of start to grow. And at first you just see little like spots of green poke out. And then as soon as they hit the light, they explode into this explosion of green growth, um, kind of vines and bramble that latch around the snowy salamander's feet and tail, trying to hold it back along with accidentally Astor's feet. <laughs> well, uh, it'll get my arms too darn. Cool. Uh, anything else, Eastgrim? That will be it. Yes. Zarius. Um, Zarius will uh, move alongside of the snowy salamander again. Uh, and this is still difficult terrain, correct? Right. 
Well, Zarius can still move there. Sounds good. And uh, he really wants to try and stop this thing because it's hurting him a lot. <laughs> so uh, he will uh, he will attack with Shillelagh, and what he'll do is that he'll. Um, uh, take his staff and just try and plunge straight into it in like a desperate effort to try and damage the guy. The snowy salamander. The snowy salamander. Yeah, that's fine. And he'll try another stunning strike. Twenty six will stun him. God. Um you have a color for you? Yellow? I think yellow is your color. Yeah. That looks like it's on Astor. <laughs> oh. Well, <laughs> it's but not. I know, I know, I know. Uh I I will do another Shulele attack. Uh uh, same sort of thing. Uh, this time with a little bit more hope because he actually stunned him. Yeah. And hold on one moment. Yeah, uh, and uh, he will uh, then try to punch the the snowy salamander again, uh, as to do as much damage as possible. I take it twenty five hits. Yeah. And, uh, uh, knowing that. Uh, knowing that he's stunned, uh, he's going to stay right there and hope for the best. Cool, that ends his... Uh, Bryn. Alright, I'm going to try go this and... again. Oh. Uh, no. Uh, go ahead and give me uh, acrobatics. Pow. Yeah. The sky begins to go uh, bury up from there. There, he begins to try to climb up the tree. Um, I rolled ahead of time for this. Uh, the tree does not support its weight, um, so the tree begins to fall, and you fall uh, ten feet up. You hit the ground. Twelve is enough to not um, not uh, inflict any damage. I'm going to roll one d six to see which direction you fall. Okay. You are 10 feet on the ground, um, prone, technically. Prone, okay. But that will end his turn. Cool. Hey, he's got, he's staying there? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. I am going to go ahead and... If I move... Here, I can see the snowy salamander, correct? Correct. Okay. Let me check one thing really quick. It happened last turn, so... Okay. Actually, I can't move there, can I? No, I can. I can crawl over there. What's the crawl speed? Half your movement speed. So with difficult terrain, you can move one space. Okay, well then I'm just going to stand up and move one space instead. That's fair. Can I hit Snowy Salamander from here? Uh, yeah. I'll give oh, that to you. Okay, cool. Uh, because Snowy Salamander is stunned, I have advantage. Correct. Here's um, some... So there's like 
three reasons why you have advantage. I know. So. <laughs> I know. But I'll go with that one. Um, here's a fire bullet. Thirty damage. Here's a fire bullet. <laughs> I'm consistent. Here's a fire bullet. <laughs> I am really consistent. That does Wow. Alright. Holy cow. It's max damage each time. Yeah. Oh my god. When push comes to shove. I, I can do something. Yes. Speaking of pushing, I have one more shot. I'm going to hit the guy in front of me. The roving reptilian. Fair. With, uh... Actually, no, screw that. I'm hitting the Frigid Fighter. With uh, another Fire Bullet. <laughs> it's broken, right? It has to be broken. <laughs> Who'd you pay off? I... 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 <laughs> um, it takes fire damage, so it's Frigid... I know, uh, it's back. Um, you know what... Didn't expend I, it the last time it recharged. I'm going to add something, okay. if I can. Sure. Try this again. Um, blah, blah, blah. That misses. Oh, okay. It doesn't work. Well, that's 14 more damage into it, so I'll take it. Yeah. Yay, superiority die. Useful even when you miss. All right, I'm done. Anything else? Okay. Astor. Cool. So, first and foremost, Astor is going to use a bonus action to move his hex spell from Snowy Salamander that was killed to... I'm sorry, who has been attacking again? The Roving Reptilian? No, the Frigid Fighter. The fri oh, over there. How far away is that? Within distance. Yeah, you know what? He's going to move the Hex over to the Frigid Fighter with the uh, bonus action. <clears throat> and and something that I haven't been uh, declaring, he also has disadvantage with uh, Constitution... Uh, what was it? Ability checks here. Ability checks. Cool. And um, so he's going to move... 30 feet over and use his action to essentially it'll look like he throws his short sword over in the general direction of Frigid Fighter and it splits into three beams, um, essentially being three Eldritch Blasts attempting to hit the fighter. Yeah, roll it. Okay. 18, 12, and 23? Uh, 18, 13, and 23. Correct. Uh, 23 will hit. Cool. And uh, here's your hex damage. This is uh, force damage, correct? From Melder's Blast, yes. Hex is necrotic. Oh, and Hex is necrotic, yeah. Sounds good. Um, anything else? Mm, no, that'll do it. Lilith. Okay. So, uh, Lilith is going to move for 15 feet. She's on the ground now, right? Uh, you are underneath. You are technically grappled. The bubble is grappled. Correct. So, um, but you are in the bubble. Right. Hold, hold, hold on. I'm going to do something kind of, kind of crazy here. Actually, sorry, real quick retcon. I think I'm still being held by the vines unless they scream and dismiss them. Not yet. It's not my turn. Okay, I can still reach with everything, though, but I just didn't move. Sorry, go on. You would have okay. rolled disadvantage. We'll let it go today. Uh, Lilith. 
Okay. So my I make my rod the flame tongue. Um and I'm going to drop the bubble and I'm going to attack him. And as I attack him, I am going to uh, use one of the special abilities of my rod. Cool. Um, so So does a 27 hit? Yeah, that'll hit. Okay. So I do an extra D8 radiant damage because of protection domain. And then I am going to try to paralyze him with the paralyzation effect of my, um, hold on here a second, I'll put it up for you. So um, I got to roll. It's a 1d20 plus 9 against his strength defense. Sure. Because it's a DC 17, so that would make it a 9, correct? Correct. Okay. So does a 19 hit his strength defense? No, it does not. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well... I did a also, bunch of it, it's going to fall on top of you, so you're going to take some damage. Oh, this is a huge creature. Um, okay. Takes 17 damage as it falls on top of you. You are considered restrained currently. So you can just take your, you can technically just crawl out of it if you choose to. What's that? You can crawl out of it if you choose to. Okay, at what, half speed? Right. Well, you're you're also um, in difficult terrain, but um, I'll allow you to take your movement to crawl out from underneath the, the weight of it. That's fine with me. Okay. But you will exit okay. prone. So basically my movement, I'm going to just go here Okay, and then, then as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself. Which okay. is, isn't going to matter because he's just going to fucking breathe on me again and I'm going to die, so it doesn't really matter. But, I got to try. Sounds good. Lilith and Zarius, I'm attacking your gun. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't hit me. Zarius, um, you take 22 hit your con, Zarius? Oh, easily. Okay. Uh, so he goes in, freeze in, breathes out. Um, Lilith will, won't, will be able to uh, duck underneath it, still feeling some of the frigid air, but not enough to fully vanquish her. Uh, Zarius, how are we doing? Uh, negative 47. What's your total HP? Negative 47. <laughs> Oh, uh, 110, 110. Cool. So, uh, I'm not I'm not dead. You are we can do yeah, you go in there, you feel the full blast. You um expected this um you expected babies to cry. Uh you expected this atrocity uh of this cold area to to affect you negatively, but you didn't expect creatures like this to come about. So, take us to Nara. Now, can you explain to me again what this blue area of effect ring is? Entangle. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cast Erupting Earth in a 20 by 20 square that encompasses Zarius, Iskrim, and Astor, but I'm going to bend it into its fire element. So it's going to deal 3d6 damage, or 3d6 health instead of deal damage. Sound good? Yeah, it's fine. I'm just gonna um, 
write the to write the healing in there because it's not actually doing any damage. Yeah, just roll the HP. 13 HP to each of you. Not bad. And that's my turn. Uh, takes the East Ground. Okay, so before letting go of the Entangle spell, Iskrim is going to pluck a small thorny vine shoot from the growing masses of plants around him, and then the plants that were surrounding and holding the snowy salamander will curl back on themselves and retreat under the snow. He's going to run towards the roving reptilian. I'm not dashing or anything. As, as you do this, why don't you give me a nature or religion check, whichever is higher. All right, never mind. Okay, so he's not actually using the dash action. I'm just... Cinematically, he's running. Um, Sounds good. And let's see. So as he's running, he sends a mental thought to his patron spirit, the polar bear, asking basically for the power to make his vine grow. He's going to swing out his arm and cast Thorn Whip. Um. As you do that, um, you described it as uh, asking for your what to uh, help you? My patron spirit. Um, as you do this, you seem to grow in size. You're considered a large creature for the end of this encounter. Oh! You'll do an extra... Extra 1d4 damage on all your rolls. Or, um, yeah, 1d4. Cool. Yeah! Uh, that was to hit for my thorn web. That hits. You're like Peter Dinklage from Infinity War. Da, 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 da. Um, you said 1d4? Yeah, so we'll do an extra 1d4 on top of everything else. So Correct. this is Thorn Whip, correct? Yes. Remember, Thorn Whip increases in damage as you uh, get higher level. Uh, and this is character level, like class level. So this should actually do 3d6, not 1d6. So go ahead and roll me an additional 2d6. That was a lot of d6 words in there. And then Zarius, you're on deck. Hey, there you go. Uh, it's safe to say you have his attention, I guess. Now, because you said I'm a large creature now? Mm-hmm. And he's huge. Does that mean I can pull him closer to me? Correct, but he's already adjacent to you. He's already adjacent to me. Cool. Um, so as a result, um, I've got the whip in one hand with him held, and then I'm going to use my second attack with my pick and slice so, it. So cantrips don't actually work with your attack action. Your cantrip no? is the action. I apologize. Okay. Okay, right. you're, you're, you're tall. I'm tall. Cool. All right, there you go. That's it. Um, Zarius. All right, so Zarius will move over by the roving reptilian. Remember difficult terrain? Yep, so five. I can I move there. Uh... <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, you will not have a I, I know. Um, uh, he's going to desperately attack with Shillelagh. Oh, and he will try a stunning strike.
18 oh, against Kong. 18, 18, 18, 18. Uh, that will not do it. <sighs> he will try it again. It's 20 hit. Yep. Stunning strike. 18 didn't hit his con defense? Nope. Neither okay. does 14. Um, and then uh, Zarius will... Uh, I would take his hands and give him a nice little punch to his leg, probably, is what it would be, especially due to his height. And that would miss. And uh, then Zarius is going to throw the whip in the general direction of the roving reptilian. Cool. Uh, let's, um, that, will, that will not work, but... Right. Um... Give me some descriptors as you kind of come in, take your staff and swing it and do all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so the Sunday strike uh, ends up kind of turning his staff a little blue as he's uh, sticking his staff into the roving reptilian. And uh, what ha ends up happening is that he... Uh, Right as he's about to enter with the hit, the light kind of, the blue shimmeriness to his staff just disappears and Zarius looks at his staff kind of confusing, like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you doing this to me now? Uh, and uh, with his fist, he ends up trying to uh, uh, swing at the leg, but uh, due to the fact that he's damaged, uh, he's been damaged so much, uh, Zarius kind of just throws his arm forward, not even caring where he hits, and just ends up missing completely. Um, followed by that same arm trying to reach then down to his whip, and then again, completely not even like flicking any sort of action into the whip. Uh, to try and weaken the target, so. Got it. He will attempt to recharge. He will not. Um, so, Eskrim is the threat. Eskrim is a giant ice dwarf. Uh, that's pretty scary. Uh, we're going to see all three attacks on Eskrim. The... Shoot, let me check. Oh, man. All right, both the first and the second ones hit. Uh, you will take 21 piercing total. Wow, your armor class sucks. Top of the round, Bryn. All right, so Bryn uh, got tackled out of a tree, fell on the floor, and then pumped four r fire rounds into two snowly, uh, salamanders, taking one of them out. And luckily, her friends came to her aid, so probably while the roving reptilian was bearing down on her, the other two showed up, and she is going to run this away. Run away! Um, so she takes a few steps, running away from that, and then kind of does a roll into uh, well she rolls and takes out her lever action at the same point and is going to, going to try to help Lilith out who's needs some help desperately um, I would get you away from that but because of the dif difficult terrain it wouldn't really help much so instead I'm going to shoot it and add some stuff so here's attack the first misses Damn. Attack the second. Better. I'm yeah, going to go it. ahead and... Yeah, that'll do it. Go ahead and add this to it. Give me a second. Let me find it. Uh, 
distracting strike. So, uh, six extra damage, and the next attack on that guy before the start of my next turn has advantage. Got it. And, and then one more shot. Yes. So, Chris, real, real quick, is that any attack or is that just a weapon attack? That says attack roll. The next what attack you, roll, period. Yeah. Oh, is it dead? Oh, that, that was quick. Sweet. I mean, Dude, you crit twice. I crit twice and hit it with double damage <laughs> last turn. And I'm all out of ammo, so this is perfect timing. I also did 22 fire damage to it and then a bunch of radiant. And... Mm hmm. And she's going to. Basically, so this is what I imagine is that the Lilith got like tackled out of the tree or like crushed out of the tree, basically. And Bryn probably didn't see Lilith get out alive. Um, so she's going to scream, Lilith, are you all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be it Your for turn. me. Yep. Astor. Cool. Astor is going to use his bonus action to move his hex from Fidget Fighter over to the Rogan Reptilian. He's going to... Oh. Wait, is he actually dead? <laughs> no, I don't know why I put the... I meant to put the yellow one. <laughs> he caught me pretty off guard. Um, anyways, he's going to move 30 feet. Just just reiterating, this is a con. Well, I get to pick, but we'll go ahead and say con again this time. It is difficult to run. Oh, right. Sorry. And just shoot three Eldritch Blasts until he gets close enough. So you just see Astor kind of just have another like, ball of energy appear on his right hand and just throws it in the general direction of the Roping Reptilian. And it splits into three. So here we go. Does it have to be the one? And then I'll add two hex damage. Hold on. 16 misses, 20 hit. Okay, cool. Okay. Let me make sure I declare that it hits before you. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> I was just assuming based on the previous numbers, but I will keep that in mind. And that's the end of his turn. Uh, Lilith. Okay. Lilith kind of pissed right now at these people, at these reptilians. Sticks forth her hand, and she says, "Die, you son of a bitch!" And she's gonna cast Guiding Bolt at fourth level. Sounds good. And hopefully it hits. Misses, kills Zarius. Oh, sad Damn trombone. It. Damn it! Bum, 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 bum. Boom. And as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Healing Word on Zarius. First Sounds level. Good. Uh, you are in range, I'm assuming. Yep. Uh, yeah. North. All right. Perfect. Um, Naroth is going to keep a good thing going. He's going to um, use his bonus action to use his boots to travel 20 feet and then continue it to another 30. So total of 30 feet. Um, and he is going to use his um, uh, erupting fire, let's just call it. Um, but this time we're going to do it at level three. Sounds good. And Zarius and Iskram are going to be healed by 12. This is against... Uh... 
Tak, ska jag ut. You will recharge. Anything else? That's it. Uh, does that hit a... Uh, I don't think that would hit uh, the Astor. Nope. No, it's uh, totally split square. Thinking. Cool. Eastgrim. So, using his whip's hold on the roving reptilian to maneuver himself into a better position, uh, Iskrim is going to move... Uh, and he raises his war pick, and he's going to swing it with a mighty groan of effort at the reptilian. Does that hit? Excellent. Uh, so he plunges the pick deep into the meaty part of the creature, drawing it out just as quickly as he plunged it in. Blood swing slinging off of the pick's edge. Uh, he plunges it one more time at the creature. Don't forget your extra 1d4 damage. Cool beans. For the first attack. Uh, and he misses as the salamander, or I'm sorry, as the reptilian bucks at just the right moment. That bucker. Wow. There's my extra d4 of damage. Got it. Serious. Zarius will keep on trying to just stab his staff into the guy. The, I'm sorry, the roving reptilian. And uh, hopefully uh, he ends up hitting him. Hey. Because Zarius would like to stab him with the little blue light again and see if he can stun him. <laughs> Uh, six damage. Oh. Praise. Yes, praise God. I was going to say praise Asmodeus, but. <laughs> let's not. Uh, I know. Let's not do that. Um, <laughs> and uh, Zerius will have a new vigor in his, uh, in his attack and trying to go down into the guy's uh into the roving reptilian's foot or claw whatever um so he's going to try and like stab it into the icy ground um with his shillelagh oh ho, ho. Nice. cool uh and then just to add insult to injury, I'm going to be like, take this, and then to give a little punch. Take this. Eh. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> please fall over dead after the <laughs> tiny <laughs> punch from Sirius. And that'll end his turn. My turn. Prin. Tiny punch. These areas gave this half, half-hearted punch. What do you do? Oh, is is it not its turn? It's stunned. What? It's stunned. Oh. Okay, so after dropping the other two, Bryn feels a little cocky. If she does some quick maths. Um, so I'll take the attack sh action. Use the first uh, attack to reload. And then this thing you're reloading. <laughs> this thing is going to eat some fire bullets. That's what I'm reloading. Hey, right, cool. Begin. That misses. That misses? <laughs> 16 misses. Well, I'm feeling lucky. Okay. Did I come back on Fuck. short rest? 23 hits. It's stunned. Oh, yes. Haha. <laughs> Success. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> also, yes, the ring comes back on the short rest. Uh, cool. two more. Oh my god. 
60 damage? This will blow no, no. It. No, that's 30. I saw the green and thought I got a crit. <laughs> 23 hits. Should I do it? Should I blow everything and kill this thing? You have to hit. Are you going to do it? I'm, I'm very much co contemplating action surging. Nah, it's stunned. I'll let you guys do it. I've already killed two. I don't need to kill another one. <laughs> Aster. <laughs> Aster is just going to charge a lot. 15 feet and then throw another three Eldritch Blasts. He's almost there. By the way, Bryn is slightly disappointed that she didn't kill this one. Sorry, did you see that hit, Chris? 22 hits. I'll just add that on now. Second. 23 hits. Sorry, just the first one. I don't know why I doubled it. Twenty-five hits. Cool. Anything else? Mm, no. Lilith. It's still alive. Yep. I would say kicking wood. It's stunned. <laughs> But badly injured. Alright, well, fuck it. I'm almost dead, so... Um... I gotta do this. <sighs> On myself. I don't know why it keeps putting 76. It's just 70. Sounds good. How does it look like? Um, I uh, reach down and touch my holy symbol, and this sort of blue, bluish energy emanates from the, the holy symbol and just encompasses me, and it's sort of like a steam as the wounds close and the, the chill that's in me is sort of lifted and it's sort of like a steam rises off of my head um and then um as a uh bonus action i am going to send another healing word towards zarius because i know or with who's who's hurt more astor or zarius who looks hurt more they look about the same yeah, they're both pretty messed up. <laughs> yeah, but Zarius went down. No, I'm kidding. Um, so yeah, I'll, sure. everybody gets one. Everybody gets one what? Oh. Cool. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. No. Uh. All right, at this point, Naroth is going to, um, Naroth is going to, um, quicken spell, uh, two firebolts at the last creature left. Firebolts. The cantrip, yes. Got it. That nine damage on the first one is actually eleven. Yep. Yeah, Want to describe the kill? Sure. Um, so, uh, in the same manner as Bryn shooting down all the other ones, you see uh, Naroth uh, try to catch Bryn's eye, put up two finger guns, and uh, shoot twice with them, <laughs> shooting firebolts out of his fingertips. <laughs> Hitting the uh, last thing that falls over dead. You see a giant smile. And as we see that, we fade to black. 
All right, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us tonight for the Low Rollers Live. Uh, if you want to see any of our past episodes, follow the YouTube links down below, and you'll find them all there. And we do stream every Monday night at 9 p.m. and every Wednesday night at 5 p.m. So you can also join us there for more Low Rollers Live. We will see you again next week. Thank you so much.